I mean, people can fall away. We know the Bible says that will happen in the last days, but it doesn't stop the power of the resurrection. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven. Going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook. They became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Yeshua who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen just as he said. Come, look, see the place where he, he lay. Then go quickly now, tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you'll see him. Now I've told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. They ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Yeshua met them. Shalom, he said. They approached him. They clasped his feet. They, they adored him. Then he said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Now fast forward, book of Acts. Paul is standing on on his, for his life to, in, his, in defense on trial before the Roman authorities for the resurrection. Acts 26. While Paul was stating these things in his defense, Festus said in a loud voice, Paul, you're out of your mind. Your great learning has driven you mad. Paul said, I am not mad, most excellent Festus. On the contrary, I'm speaking out with truthful and rational words, for the king knows about these matters, and I also speak to him with confidence, since I am persuaded that none of these things have escaped his notice. For this has not been done in a corner. The resurrection. Most radical message reality on planet earth. Goes against History goes against biology, goes against experience, goes against the flow of this world, which is to death. The world goes from death, from life to death. We go from death to life. And it all happens in Jerusalem. Is that significant? The Bible records the gospel went forth, the word of the resurrection went forth from Jerusalem to the world. Is that significant? Well, it is. See, in virtually every synagogue in the world, when the Torah scroll is taken out, the words of the prophet Isaiah are recited. Ki mitzion teitzei Torah, from Zion shall go forth the law. Udavar Adonai me'erushalayim, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. From Jerusalem. The prophet said that the word of God will go forth from Jerusalem to the world. There's only one faith in the world that began, went forth from Jerusalem, and that is the gospel. Of course, it is from, there is one faith from the Hebrew Scriptures, but it begins in Jerusalem. Even Orthodox Judaism cannot claim that. We know the gospel went forth from Jerusalem. It's clear. No historian can deny it. The mother church was in Jerusalem. The first church council was in Jerusalem. Stephen was stoned to death in Jerusalem. Paul was there in Jerusalem. They were arrested there. They were there in the temple courts in Jerusalem preaching the gospel. The death of James was there. The fact that, and these were Galileans, so they wouldn't be in Jerusalem unless something happened. So the fact that it began in Jerusalem it's important for another reason you may not have thought of. That's what we're going to see. The gospel had to be preached in Jerusalem right away. Now, first of all, because let's say they leave, they go back to their lives, they, they start get, going back to the fishing. Then a year later, say, let's, start, let's go back there. It would have been over because it had to happen right after you had the, you had the crucifixion. You had, to have, you had to have it right there preached right after for this to move. But here's another thing. They always avoided Jerusalem because, especially them, because Jerusalem wasn't their home. Galilee was, for most of them. So Jerusalem is where there were people who hated them, and they, they wanted to destroy them, and, they, and so therefore, they're, always, they're avoiding that. They would be avoiding that. So why would they go back there, especially after everything that happened, unless something happened? You have the tragedy of the crucifixion, so you had, so why would they go back there where the people there want to kill them too? Unless something happened. There had to be something more powerful 
than the death of Messiah. Jerusalem was the city of the, those who crucified them. They had the power to do it. They already showed that they're willing to do it. If they killed them, why aren't they going to kill these people? It was a city actually ruled by those who persecuted, who hated them. It was, it was the city of the people who, had the, who guaranteed that the tomb, they guarded the tomb. It's going to say that the city ruled by those who, are, who don't want any of this faith to, to go because that's why they killed him. The tomb was empty. They actually stayed there. They actually end up, these Galileans actually moved to Jerusalem. That's how, that's how confident they are. The fact that they could preach there and not be disproved instantly, not be stopped. Even they were threatened with death and they did not stop. Not a shred of evidence against this from that time. And the threat of death itself could not even do it. Now, now if you're coming up with something you're not sure of and someone says, I'm going to kill you, you say, okay, hey, you know, let me check it out. Maybe they, they said, no, 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 no. You threaten to kill. You can threaten all you want to kill. We don't care. In other words, they had something so powerful they didn't care. They had something so powerful that you tell me about death. I don't care about death. I'm not afraid of death anymore. Amen. Something, somehow it had a, had a power to overcome death. That same, now think about it, the same people who just before were crushed, broken, disillusioned, in mourning, br uh, 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 depressed, afraid for their lives, hiding, shivering, hiding. All of a sudden, something happens. They become these people, these, 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 these unlikely fishermen, crushed people become the most confident, courageous, strongest, life-changing, history-changing, world-changing people this planet has ever known. How do you explain that? How, even, even, even historians, kind of, even, you know, there's no serious historian who can, who can go around it. They'll even say, well, we can't, we can't explain why they thought this. But, you know, you know, but clearly, they, that they, they said they saw him. The, the, the fact is, only the resurrection could account for that. Not only that it happened then, but it's changed the world to this day. Even with all the stuff that's against it, even all the wokeness, even all, all the political correctness, even all the anti it's still there. Still there. He is still who He is. The resurrection, it means the resurrection is real. You see, this is not some tale that you hear. This is not something you have to hope is true. God doesn't need that. He doesn't need your help. Not something that depends on how you feel one day or the next. It's not something you have to wonder about. It's not something at all like that. And waver back and forth. This is real based on hard backed evidence. Solid. Rock solid. The tomb is either empty or it's not. Even the enemies of the faith admit it was empty. It means you have a faith you can depend on. You can stop worrying. You don't have to go, oh God, you're going to come through. It's gonna... You can stop going back and forth. You can stop living in weakness or half-hearted. You've got a promise you can depend on. You've got a salvation you can be sure of. You have a love you can depend on. You've got a faith and a hope you can stand on. You've got a calling you can be sure of. You've got a God who you can trust. Amen. Every word of this book you can take at, take at full strength. When it tells you to do something, do it. When it says it's going to do it, it's going to happen. Believe. Go all out. Do what it says. Go all out. The only way to go in God is all out. Half-hearted isn't going to do anything. You've got a resurrection that goes against everything that this world is about. But it is so, it can, the world to this day cannot disprove it. Or can, nor can it stop the power of it. I mean, people can fall away. We know the Bible says that will happen in the last days. But it doesn't stop the power of the resurrection. What does it tell you? It means this power of this faith, of this resurrection, is not ever about running away from your problem. Never about avoiding the problem. You've been given the power to overcome the problem. Never about hiding from evil. You don't have to fear. You don't have to fear this world. You don't have to fear the culture. You don't have to fear Hollywood. You don't have to fear the government. You are on the victorious winning side of history. 
Everything else is going to fade away. Every person who shouts and does, is going to fade away. But the Word of God will not fade away. The name of Yeshua, Jesus, after 2,000 years, is still there, the name above every name. Nobody can stop it. Hollywood can't stop it. Disney can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. It's still there because it's real. Every empire kingdom is going to fall, but His name is still going to be there because the tomb is empty. Jerusalem is the place of the crucifixion. That's the problem. That was a big problem. But they went right to it because, with the power of God because God is stronger than any problem you have. You have the power of life. You don't run from death. You don't run from that situation of death. You confront it. You bring life into it. You bring light into darkness. You don't run from the dark. You don't fear the darkness. You, you shine to the darkness. Arise and shine for your light has come. What does it tell you? God has given you the power to overcome and not run away. So you don't have to avoid. You don't have to run. You don't have to hide. You don't have to be afraid of. You don't have to be depressed about. You don't have to be gloomy about. God's given you the power to overcome it. You can take the power, take on the darkness, take on the giant. Messiah didn't rise from the dead so you'd live a defeated life. He didn't have victory so you could be in defeat and you could just celebrate it once a year. He gave you the power so you could live it 365 days of the year. And if you go down, you fall down, He gave you the, what's the power. You got, you got the power to get up. So don't keep dwelling on going down. Get up and move on. Take on the power of the sin with the power of the resurrection. Take on that temptation by the power of the resurrection. That's why He gave it to you. If you don't use it, what's the point? Messiah didn't rise so you'd avoid your Jerusalem. He rose so you'd get in. You'd come to your Jerusalem. You'd turn it upside down. Bring that power to your Jerusalem. That's where you live. That's where you are. That's what He wants to change. Not just some other, He wants to be where you are. That's Jerusalem. Bring it to your home. Bring it to your marriage. Bring it to your family. Bring it to your daily life. Bring it to your habits. Bring it to your problems. Bring it to your walk. Transform them. The power of the resurrection is greater than any sin you'll ever come up with greater than any fall and mess up and failure you'll ever do. Greater, not only what you've done, what you do, but what you will do. Greater than any lack of love, greater than your past, greater than your childhood, greater than any rejection or guilt or abuse or, or failure or heartbreak, greater than the disease, greater than the abuse. The disciples first proclaimed it right where it happened. And they had to do it first there then they could do it to the rest of the world. Because you could do it in Jerusalem, you can do it anywhere. So they did. So you. God has a calling on your life for great things. But you first have to deal with your Jerusalem. Bring the power first to your Jerusalem. Bring the power to where you are, to those around you. Bring it to your life, what you're really dealing with every day when you get home and nobody's watching. Deal, bring it to there. Then you can bring it to the ends of the earth. Then you can fulfill your calling. Amen. Now listen to the words of the fishermen. Shimon, Kepha, Simon, Peter. The one who, he, you know, had a good heart, but he was always falling on his face. And he was hiding for his life. He denied the Lord. He denied the Lord. He was, a, he was, in, he was weeping bitterly. He was in regret and shame and fear. Now something happened. Because now listen to him as he speaks to all Jerusalem, the leaders who can kill him at any moment. He says this, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that can, even Peter talking like this is big, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Yeshua. The one you delivered up, you disowned him in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him, but you disowned the Holy One, the Righteous One. You asked for a murderer to be granted to you. But put to death the prince of life, the one whom God has raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. And on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Yeshua, Jesus, that has strengthened this man who just got healed. And now, brethren, listen, I know you acted in ignorance just as your rulers did. But the thing which God announced beforehand by the mouth of all the prophets, 
that his Mashiach, his Messiah, his anointed one should suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and return to the Lord, that your sins may be wiped away, and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send Yeshua, the Messiah, who is appointed for you. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.